home and to my first planned tour video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Henny, also known as Solarium over on Instagram. I love plants and have been collecting them for about a year and a half to two years now. Currently, I have between 180 to 200 plants. I also have three cats named Nabi, Nova, and Nyla, and you'll see them kind of sprinkled throughout this video because they are adorable, at least in my opinion. And yeah, I've been meaning to make a YouTube channel for a while now, but I'm just now getting around to it. And I thought, you know, what better way to start it off than with a little plant tour. So you can see exactly what kind of plants I got and what I'm all about. So we got a lot of plants to get through. So without further ado, here are my plants. I hope you guys enjoy. This is my living room area where that big window gives us lots of morning light. Over here, I have three little cute sensivarias slash snake plants. And I like putting plants, you'll notice, in a lot of little cute pots. So that's what I got going on over here. I got this console from Ikea. The plants down from Home Sands, and then I just got a couple of bigger plants over here. Let's start off with the hanging plants. So this one is a variegated Boston fern. I really like the little stripes. I think that's very cute. I just have to remember to water this one quite often because it likes to stay moist and if it gets too dry then the fronds go crispy, like so. Right beside that, I have this monkey tail cactus and I think this one's just so unique and beautiful. Um, right now, not so much because there's only like two tails and then a new one here and then a baby one growing here. But eventually it'll have a bunch hanging down and then grow these beautiful big red flowers. So that's what I'm looking forward to with this one. Next to that lovely cactus, I have this little sun catcher from Etsy and I really like it because it just throws all these beautiful rainbows around the house and the cats like to look at them and chase them and i think it just looks so cute and like minimalistic and moving on i have this variegated string of pearls hanging i forgot to water it a few times so there is a bunch of uh little shriveled up little dried ones <laughs> but overall i think it's looking okay and like eventually it'll be cascading down a lot longer under those hanging plants, I have this Calathea Majestica White Star. It's one of the only Calatheas I have. I only have two total, I think. And it gets this beautiful pink sun stressing, which I absolutely love. And some of the leaves are not sun stressed because I had this plant in a different area, kind of um, in spring and winter time, and it just wasn't getting enough light to get that pink sun stressing. It was just under a grow light. So next to that, I have a Euphorbia lactea white ghost, which is this one. It is a very unique plant in my collection, and it is technically succulent, but it looks like a cactus. And I love the coloring of it. It's like this bluey white milky color. And then it's marbled with this darker greeny blue color and it's just growing like crazy. It starts out yellow and then it turns into this milky white color afterwards. Next to that I have this series Spirellus. It is a plant that I actually got not too long ago but I just found mealings on it yesterday so I've been treating it. Um, it looks okay for right now so hopefully it will recover and start spiraling more because when I ordered this plant I expected it to be more of a swirl like this but it came kind of roughly. In front of that we have a Euphorbia Ridgei variegata. And this one is just such a cutie and it's so unique as well. It kind of looks like a tropical pine cone or maybe a pineapple, but it's a little succulent that grows all these little leaves on top. So it starts out green like this, like the ones in the middle here. These are like the new leaves and they slowly, slowly turn into this color, which I think is just stunning. A very easy one to take care of as well. And this one's really easy to know when to water. You just touch the leaves and if they're like soft or flimsy, then that's when you water. And then after you water, it firms right up. Next, we have another cute little succulent. I believe this is a Bronzia Maximiliani. Um, I've been kind of inconsistent with my watering, so there's some wrinkled ones there, but it's firm on the top. And yeah, 
I think it's just cute because it's like kind of heart shaped when it comes out. Next we have another little cactus. It's not doing super well, but this is a Gymno Calisium Milano Vicii. I believe such a long name for just a little cactus. Um, but I just repotted this into a bigger pot because it was just getting dry away too fast. I know it's a cactus, but it was like shriveling up. So next we have a little blue green cactus it is a martillo cactus geometrizens all these cacti have like crazy names not much to say about it cute little cactus to fill the space next we have a little haworthia cooperi glutinous and it's just one of those kind of translucent succulents that look like little jellies and that's what i like about it next to that is actually one of my favorite plants in my whole collection it is called an operculicaria dicari. It's looking a little crazy and unruly right now, but I have it in this beautiful planter from Meepa's Plants and Pots. She is a ceramicist based out of LA, and I absolutely just love everything she makes. It's like the best quality and just the most beautiful pieces. So the leaves look like this. They're very fragile, very round, very unique and interesting. In front of that, I have another little cute succulent. This one is called a Lampranthus maximiliani. And it's kind of similar to that other one that I have. But it's the hearts are a little bit smaller and it's more of a trailing succulent. Last but not least, I have this Hoya Chelsea in this beautiful planter from, from Tree to Sea. And she is based in Calgary, Alberta. And this Hoya I think is just stunning with its dimpled round leaves. And I made that little trellis myself with some wire and jute string. Moving down, I just have a little standard pothos here, just a jade pothos. Not much to say about that one. Pretty easy to take care of. Next to that, I have a watermelon peperomia that I forgot to water, so I just watered it. Um, but that's what it looks like. And next to that is a Cleopatra snake plant. And I just really like how wavy the leaves are. I think it's just such a stunning snake plant. And look at the patterns on the leaves. Of course, I have some neon pothos propagations here. Lots of roots and some submerged new leaves, I guess. So here's the last couple of plants in this room. So this one is my spindle palm tree. It used to be my pride and joy. It used to be really beautiful and lush. It's not looking as happy these days. It really suffered in the Canadian winters here, which are really dry and cold and harsh. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's still alive and there is kind of a new leaf coming out right over here. So I'm holding out hope that it will survive. We will see how it does this winter, I guess. And next to that is my Monstera. I actually had a really big Monstera, but I sold that one because I just don't have room anymore to have multiples of big plants. And there's a new little leaf coming out. And Nova says hi. <laughs> so moving over to the right, we have a little cat tower and then this giant Hoya Carnosa. So this is actually my mom's and she is out of the country right now. So I'm taking care of it for her and I've actually been taking care of it for her for the last few years and it's just grown like crazy. Right, Nyla? <laughs> and I just have this Hoya up on two trellises that are U-shaped um, and crossed at the top. There's a ton of peduncles on it as well. It's not blooming right now, but there's just a ton of blooms that are about to come. Um, and it's just like scattered throughout the whole plant. Like, look at this. It's nuts. Next to that, we have this little philodendron birkin that I got for my birthday a couple years ago. And because this is a genetically modified plant that is kind of unstable with its variegation, um, a lot of the leaves are starting to come out really white and really small as well. So I'm not sure how well this plant is going to do in the future in my collection, but we shall see. Also, Nabi says hi. <laughs> So now we're at the kitchen windowsill where I have a few little plants. The first one over here on the left is Spanish moss. I got this as a gift. It's like an air plant, but it's very long and it hangs down like this. And when I do remember, I water it by dunking it in some water with some fertilizer. 
This next one over here is my mom's plant actually. It's a jade plant that I'm taking care of for her. And it was a gift to her, I believe, given to her by a coworker friend. Next one is another one of those pink variegated cacti that I showed you from my console table earlier. So this one, again, is beautiful, but it had a bunch of scale the other day. So I literally spent a whole hour picking them all off and spraying it down and treating it. And now I don't see any, so fingers crossed. And there's a little bud over there where a new flower will come out. So I'm excited for that. Next to that, we have my Echinopsis domino. Um, this is a pretty common cactus and it's not very expensive either. It has a little baby coming out over here. I really like this one because it gives me the most beautiful big white flowers. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen it. And it's given me two flowers so far this year, so that was amazing. Next to that, I have a variegated Haworthia plant. It's a little succulent with variegation. It has a lot of babies right now that are going kind of crazy. So I'm probably gonna have to remove some of those um, and put them in their own little pots or something pretty soon. But it's really interesting. Some babies are like really green and some babies are like super variegated like this one. Next, we have my silver dollar vine, I believe. And this is something that hasn't grown for me at all this summer. It's alive though, which is good. I haven't killed it, but I think I just haven't watered it enough. Like if you look closely, you'll see that it's a bit wrinkled. And those are like permanent wrinkles, I think, because I've watered it um, just a couple of days ago. This last cactus here, I have two in there. Um, they were given to me by a friend, one for my birthday I think the small one and then the big one she gave me when my grandmother passed away so that was very sweet of her thanks Jody then I have a couple of random plants rooting in some water that I rarely change <laughs> So when you first come into my house, this is the first thing that you see. So you see a Mills bow wide as well as a Mills bow tall. And of course I plant both in them and on them because you got to utilize all the space you got to all the surface areas in your home when you have a million plants in the house. So let's start off kind of on the left and then we'll kind of move to the right. It's a lot of plans to get through. You ready? <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay, so first things first. I have this Anthurium Zizu, and this one is actually really prone to aphids and scale, so I've gotten it multiple, multiple times on this plant, but it is still alive and thriving somehow. It is a pretty common Anthurium, but it was one of the first plants that I got, so I like to keep that one, and I just feel like this pink purple is just so pretty. Okay, right beside that, we have our Alocasia Stingray, so I Actually, there's two plants here and I grew them both from Quorms and they are becoming huge. I actually just took this out of the cabinet today because it just doesn't fit in there anymore. As you can see, it's ginormous. The next plant is an Anthurium clarinervium, which is just one of my top favorite plants of all time. It's just such a classic with its heart shape and it's such a hardy plant. As like as far as Anthuriums go, this is one of the easiest Anthuriums you could possibly get. It's fine in room humidity, as you can see. It's constantly popping out new leaves. It's just such a hardy plant and just so beautiful, you know? Even though it's one of the cheaper Anthuriums now, I just feel like this is one of the best Anthuriums. And um, yeah, you'll see later that I have multiples of this plant because I love it so, so much. Next, we have this Fern Plumosa. It's looking a little messy, but it's just growing way too quickly. Uh, but yeah, this plant is a beautiful like feathery plant and it's technically not a fern apparently But either way, it is a very hardy plant and very easy to take care of. It's very thirsty It gets dry really quick. So I just have to remember to water it in time and as you can see it is in this beautiful Ceramic planter from clay ceramics who is a ceramic artist in the States Then we have this cute Cebu blue don't have a ton to say about it. I used to have a bigger one and then that one like rotted away. Um, I think I gave it root rot. It was just unhappy during winter time as well. So I took cuttings and this is like a baby from that. Next, we have a philodendron pink princess. It's not very pink, um, but you know, <laughs> I also accidentally snapped off, off a leaf off of here somewhere. But yeah, all these two new growth points came out from that, so that's very nice. This one's not very pink either, but that's okay. 
Beside that, I have a ping, my little ping. Um, I'll put the exact type over here. And honestly, this is my first carnivorous ping and I don't really know how to take care of it, but for now I have it in this little cloche for higher humidity and I hope it survives. And beside that, I have a bunch of little anthurium babies. I believe these are crystalline and crossed with forgetii. And I got these from Dustin. I'll put his Instagram right over here. Thanks, Dustin. And they are growing nicely. Next on the list is my Millsbow Wide. You'll find that both of my cabinets are really, really crammed. And it's because I just have way too many plants and they can really accommodate comfortably so everyone is just crammed in there and they will just have to deal with it so this is what it looks like for now i think i'm gonna have to do some reorganization so it looks better but that's for another day so i have my anthurium crystallinum here beautiful my anthurium serenoi velvet my thematophyllum stenolobum from Tantiana, who is lovely and she's based in edmonton and she just has the most healthiest beautiful plants Ooh, I love this one. This is an Anthurium Forgetii dark form. It's so velvety, so round, my favorite. And my Hoya Sarawak cream. This is a pretty recent import actually, and it's looking pretty good. This is an Anthurium Crystallinum black. This is actually the worst leaf that it has. I think that's the import leaf. And then we got this leaf here. I have a problem, like whenever I have a new leaf, I like, Tend to touch it a lot and take a million pictures of it and then it ruins the leaf because anthurium leaves are very delicate and you shouldn't touch them but there is a new leaf coming out which is really exciting this is a philodendron el choco red i have a little orchid back there which is not looking very happy um i don't want to talk about it because it's depressing me <laughs> um we're gonna keep going as you can see, there's like layers and layers of plants. So we're gonna have to remove some from the front to get to the ones in the back. This is an Anthurium Bessier, um, I think dark form. And it is stunning. Again, you'll find the evidence of me like tampering with Anthurium leaves. Above that, we have an Anthurium Silver Blush. Again, stunning plant. It's very silvery, very shimmery, and it's been really easy to take care of so far. Okay, moving on, I have a little baby McDowell. Um, it's a little bit soft and a little bit sad. I think it just didn't get enough light because it was kind of shoved into a corner for a little while um, while I was on my trip four weeks ago. I just got back last week and my mom was taking care of my plants and for the most part most of them are like really thriving and this is not her fault i think it's because of where i put it which was kind of like in the back um so yeah but it will recover that like this leaf is fine and the roots are fine so i think it'll be okay um this is my syngonium tricolor red spot I don't know, like it's supposed to have like white variegation with pink. I think it's still too juvenile to be able to tell, but that's what it's supposed to be. Next, I have my Anthurium Queen or Anthurium Boroqueenum. Again, the evidence of me tampering with the leaf when it was first coming out, but yeah, it is beautiful otherwise. And there's two new growth points. On the left here, we have a philodendron UPI, again from Plantiana, and it is growing really well. Let me just see here, make sure that there's no pests. No, nope, it's good. So underneath that, we have a Monstera Albo. So I got this from Beliefs uh, Plants and Garden Fish. And I've had this plant for like just this one leaf for about, I wanna say like eight months or something. Like it's been a long time and it's finally giving me a new leaf and it looks very white with a little bit of green so I'm really excited about that. Next to that, I have this guy over here. This is a Philodendron Varicosum Sunset and this is what the back looks like and this is actually the newest leaf, which if we can see it, see this is what happens when you have a ton of plants, like everything's just hidden. Okay, so it's still very soft but this is what it looks like very striking veining and obviously the red color in the back is amazing with a new little growth point coming out 
Right behind that, I have a philodendron patricia in a self watering planter with pollen. And it's still pretty juvenile. Beside that, we have this Anthurium regale with a new leaf coming out. Look at that. And I've had this plant for like over half a year and it hasn't done anything for me. So that's super exciting. This is a Philodendron Rubrosinctum Platinum. And this is the newest leaf. It's so shiny. I mean, I can tell why it's called Platinum. It's just beautiful and it hadn't grown any new leaves for a long time um, until very recently and I gave my mom props for that because she took care of my plants while I was gone to Europe for three weeks and again I only got back a week ago so when I came back this new leaf was just suddenly there so thanks mom beautiful leaf I think that's it for the bottom part let's move on to the top section so this top section has mostly Hoyas and a couple of Anthuriums. So this one is my Hoya Bella Variegata Lida Bui or something like that. They all have like these weird like variations of the variegated ones. But this one is stunning and it always gives me a lot of new peduncles and flowers. So if you look over here, that's a peduncle right here that will hopefully develop into a flower. right there and it just has the cutest little flower so i'm excited for that one okay next to that i have another hoya this is called a hoya globulosa and i really like it because the bottom is very very soft and hairy and the top is just so glossy and beautiful that's that this one is another hoya it's a hoya i want to say like quinn Quinerva or something like that. I'll put it over here. Um, but it has really nice veining. I'm not sure why I got this one actually. It's not really like something that I would typically pick, but it's cute. Next to that, I have a little carry eye elbow. Ooh, if I can get it out, there we go, with two new growth points. And uh, this is a very, very slow growing plant, but very cute nonetheless. This is a Hoya Polynura Brogé Silver and it is growing nice and long and it's doing really well in pond i have a little baby anthurium seedling over here that i got from somebody on instagram this one i think is like a dark mama cross with something else i actually don't remember maybe magnificum um but yeah this one is an Anthurium King of Spades and it is one of my favorite Anthuriums currently. It's just so beautiful, like the coloring has that like bluey green sheen to it. It's very velvety, very round. The veins are so delicate looking. The last plant in here is this one, it's a Deschidia Million Hearts Variegata. My goal with that one is to grow lots of roots again so that I can have it out of the cabinet and yeah, just have it in room temperature and humidity. So that's it for this cabinet, you guys. So moving on to the Millsbo Tall. At the very top, on top of the cabinet, I have my Skindapsis Trubii Moonlight. And it is stunning. I really like how it trails. And here, let me just lift it up for a second so you guys can really see how bushy this one is. I love it. I love the blue-green color. I feel like I've said that a lot recently. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I like. So that's that. And right beside that, I have my philodendron micans, which is trailing beautifully down the side here. Okay, you guys, when I said my cabinets are crammed, I really meant it. Like, especially down here, it's a little bit crazy. Like, you can't even tell what all the plants are that are in there. But right now, like I'm, you know, trying to grow some plants kind of quickly and rehabbing plants and I don't know, there's just no room for me to be able to take these out right now. But ultimately, my goal is to have this looking beautiful and not as cramps. You can like look and be able to see all the plants that are in there. We got the Superzia SP Hang Kong, which is one of my favorite plants in my collection, one of my most unique plants, and one of my most prized plants. And it's really hard to find in Canada. My parents brought this back for me from the States when they were visiting my aunt in Georgia. 
and it is just one of the most beautiful trailing plants that I've ever seen. It is so shiny, it is almost like plastic the way that it looks. And I love the way that the new growth just like forks into two fronds or two stems. Beside that, we have this Brazilian Edelweiss. But this is this fuzzy plant that's growing out of this little codex bulb. If it'll focus, there we go. So this is a Hoya Crossy Petiolata Splash. And I think the leaves are really beautiful. I really love splashy and silvery Hoyas. I think most people do these days. I have a couple more of these in another cabinet that we'll look at later, but that's one of them. So this is the normal Crassy Petiolata that's not splashed. So these two plants are technically the same. The only difference is that this one's not splashed and that one is. This one is a Hoya and Crisata Albo Marginata. And this one actually came as like a really long one stem, but I cut it up and made multiple plants out of it. This one is a Hoya Matilda. It's one of the most classic Hoyas, I feel like. It has round leaves and it has a little bit of splash and it has been growing a lot for me lately, so that's really exciting. It has a peduncle, but it's always blasted for me, like it never bloomed for me. So that's kind of what I'm looking forward to in the future. I really want to see it bloom. Next, we have this Hoya. I really like this one because the leaves are really hard and really velvety and soft at the same time. So the texture is really nice. And again, my goal with this is to be able to grow lots of roots in it and get it out into room humidity so that it can trail down. Last but not least, we have this Hoya right here. I think this is just so stunning. I really love this Hoya, look at it. Um, it's been growing like crazy for me. It came with these four leaves and then it grew these giant splashy leaves. This is a Hoya cystiantha. And I'll just show you guys a picture here of the flower that it's supposed to grow. It looks like this big white bell shaped flower and it's so, so beautiful. So under the Hooperzia, I have this Manjula. Um, and it's one of the manjulas that I have. I do have another one. I did give it root rot a couple of times So the leaves are not huge yet even though it's on the pole. It's on a growth thickly pole, which I love It's this clear type of minimalistic pole that really retains moisture well I have a little watermelon Deschidia or Deschidia ovata There's a little rotten leaf here. We'll take that out. Pretend you didn't see that <laughs> But yeah, that one's um, just rooting into some pond. Again, same thing with this one. My plan is to have it grow nice and healthy um, with nice big roots. And then I'm going to take it out of the cabinet because it doesn't need to be in here if it's not rehabbing. Next, we have a Skindapsa Silver Hero. I think this is just such a beautiful plant. It's so silvery. It actually started off with just two leaves, so it's been doing really well. So now we're moving to the big plants. I guess let's just start off with whatever's on top here. Um, so this one is a Philodendron Glorious. Such a beautiful plant and so easy to take care of. It's so velvety and it's just been growing like crazy, like nonstop. There's always a new leaf coming up. Next to that, we have my Monstera Acacoya Guensis and it hasn't had any fenestrations yet and i'm just kind of waiting for that it is again climbing my growth thickly pole and um, it's sizing up really well actually like it started off with really small leaves and now the leaves are quite large like longer than my hand but no fenestrations yet so that's kind of what i'm looking for i'll put a picture here of what it looks like with fenestrations it is beautiful so right under the Monstera and the Glorious, I have this Philodendron Lupinum. This is actually one of the first plants I ever imported. And unfortunately, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time when I first got it. So you'll see that a lot of the leaves that it has are very bleached, like very yellow because it was too close to a grow light. I also didn't put it on a moss pole, so every leaf was getting stunted and smaller and smaller until right over here, I put this on a grow thickly moss pole. So this clear moss pole here. And then you see that the leaves started growing bigger and bigger and bigger. It's kind of interesting how with this plant, you can really see the progression of my growth as a plant parent and kind of all the tragedies or 
you know, events that this plant in particular went through. So now we enter this jungle of plants. Let me just pull each one out one by one to show you what they look like. So this is my Philodendron Majestic and it is one of my favorite plants. I feel like I've been saying that a lot, but I really do mean it with each plant. Um, this is such a beautiful plant with these silvery splotches and it just looks like art to me. The leaves started out really small actually. This was the first leaf. It's very, very small and then it got a little bit bigger and then a little bit bigger and now it's sizing up really beautifully. And this is the newest leaf. Just so, so beautiful. And there's another new leaf on the way. The next plant is this Philodendron Esmeral Dense Narrow Form. And as you can see, the newest leaf is nice and wavy and quite long actually. So this is my hand and it's kind of like double the length of my hand. When I came back from my trip to Europe, I noticed that a couple of leaves are like really purple. I don't know if that's like sun stressing. Maybe it was too close to a grow light. So the next plant is my Philodendron Soderoi, which is very healthy and very happy. And again, growing on this Grow Thickly Moth Pole. However, it's not very silvery like some of the other Soderois I've seen. Like the original leaf, this is one of the import leaves, was very silvery and i think maybe i didn't give it enough light or something and now all the leaves are less silvery even if i give them a lot of light so and this is the newest leaf and it has the least amount of light so that's kind of one of the drawbacks of having a really crowded cabinet is that not all the plants are going to get you know enough light if all the leaves are overlapping with other plants next plant from this cabinet that doesn't really match with all the other ones is this hoya so this is a hoya uh, Carrii reverse variegata and I think the variegation just is just so beautiful. This is the newest leaf and um, the variegation will come over time. These leaves have reverted though and so they are green. I'm not very happy about that but I'm just keeping it on for now and yeah some of the original variegation is some of the most beautiful I've ever seen on a Hoya. And the last plant I have in here is a varicosum dark form, which I actually forgot to water. So it's uh, looking a little soft, but I just watered it, so hopefully it'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, that's what that one looks like. And that's it for my Millsbow Tall. Next to the Millsbow cabinet, I have my Philodendron Gloriosa. This is a zebra and it's smaller than the other Gloriosums that I have, which are down here. I have a Gloriosum Silver, as well as a Gloriosum Dark Form. But honestly, they look pretty similar to me, if not the same, so I don't know. I might have to sell one of the three because I wanted to collect all the Gloriosums, but they all kind of look really similar, so we will see. I do like them though, they are beautiful. Next, above that, I have a Philodendron SP Columbia Silver, and this is what it looks like. I love how puffy it is and how bluey green it is as well. This is my Pride and Joy, my Philodendron D McDowell. It's growing giant leaves, like this is my hand, and that's the McDowell. So it's quite large. Um, this is the leaf before that one, which is again really large as well and it's always growing a new leaf or a new caterpillar which is nice and then there's a little inflow growing right there so that is super exciting that will be my first inflow actually above that i have my little wall of planters so i actually had more before so you see a little nail there i had one two three four and then i had five six but because I have so many plants, it just looked too messy and busy. And even this looks a little bit messy for me. So I took those out for now. On the very left here, we have my Philodendron Paraiso Verde. This is the newest leaf. It's still growing. It's looking a little limp, actually. I think I'm going to have to water this one. <laughs> um, and then beside that, I have my Skindapsis Exotica. It is getting quite unruly though, like it is very bushy and big now, so I feel like, I don't know, I might have to take cuttings or, actually this is thirsty too. So today's actually watering day, but because I've been filming, I haven't been able to water all the plants, so that's why they look a little bilty there. 
This one right here is a zigzag cactus. Again, needs watering, but it is reaching the ceiling. And this one is a Peperomia Hope, one of my favorites. It is just so cute and just such a low maintenance plant. I love it so much and I really love round leaves and this just has the cutest little round leaves of all time. Moving over to this side, so this I believe is the east facing window. And this is my Philodendron 60s. And I just love this one. I call this my bunny plant because it looks like it has bunny ears on top. And it's just so cute. And I love the way that that one hangs and it's just so unique. It's like a UPI, but cheaper. This is my Hoya Crimson Queen. I really love this one. This is such a classic and such a beautiful plant. And when it sun stresses, the leaves become pink. This one's a little bit pink here. And it's just stunning and low maintenance. Okay, next to that one, I have a Hoya Linearis. This one dries out really quickly for me. Maybe it's because of the pot that it's in, but um, I think I'm gonna have to water this one too. But yeah, I really love this UFO pot as well. This is also by Mipa's Pots and Plants. Then I missed these little plants over here, or not so little. That's my Birds of Paradise, one of my first plants that I ever had. That is my Stromanthi Trio Star, one of my pink plants. So gorgeous. And that's my avocado plant. It's looking a little sad, so let's not look that way. Let's look over this way. So at the very top of this brass shelf here, I have my other Mandula. This is actually one of my first imports that I ever had and it's just gone through so much and I just had so much trouble with it in the beginning. It just, yeah, wasn't thriving, but now it's very happy right over here in this spot. Next one over here, this is one of my favorite anthuriums of all time. This is an anthurium politiflorum, and this one is very velvety and very shimmery if you put it in the sun. Next, we have this air plant. I have a few of them around the house, but I always forget about them. I don't think I talked about them in this video yet, but this is one of my air plants. Um, not much else to say about that one. This is my Snow Queen Pothos. I love how light and speckled the leaves are. I feel like it's just the cutest plant and it's really easy to take care of. Just water when dry and you're good. Next one here is my Skindapsis jade satin the foliage is like this gorgeous delicious dark green color and it's matte and yeah i just love the texture of this one i think it's so beautiful maybe i should cut it over here and propagate this so i can make it a more bushy plant because it's just the one vine for now next to that i have my string of hearts silver glory so this one suffered a lot last winter um, and the leaves became really small and this honestly isn't the sunniest spot If you've seen some of these sticky notes around the house, it's from my mom um, Leaving notes for herself when I was going on my trip to Europe so she can know like how to take care of plants So this plant over here is my Hoya obovata And I just feel like this is such a classic beautiful plant um, with its large round leaves and it's growing some new leaves over here on the end as well So let's move down here So right over here in the corner is my Tenanthi lover sienna. It's one of my bushier plants um, It used to be really big But then I sold that one and then took small cuttings and made it into a small plant and now it's getting bushier again Next to that I have my philodendron silver mame or mame silver this one is another one that is really easy to take care of. Next to that, we have my Pilea peperomides, or actually my mom's Pilea. Um, I've been taking care of this while she's not here. And yeah, this one was actually in that west window for a while and I think it was just too much sun. So if you look down here, you'll see that I burned and bleached some of the leaves down there, but the ones on top look good. So it's recovered nicely since then. In front of that is one of my favorite plants currently. This is my Philanthus mirabellus. It's such a stunning plant if you look at the foliage. So it's a caudex plant, so it's growing from like a potato-like structure. 
and the leaves look like this lovely and it's in this uh, self-watering terracotta planter for now and yeah very very easy plant next to that i have another potato so another codex plant this one is called a stefania kawasaki and it just has a single leaf and it's just so big and so pretty and so delicate looking i love this plant i feel like i'm saying that a lot but i mean that's why i have these plants right because i love them next to that is another cute little plant and i know it kind of looks fern like but it's actually very hard to the touch so it's a very interesting one that's just growing out of the seed here last but not least out of this bunch we have my cactus fern this one i just think looks so beautiful the leaves are so wavy and unique okay beside that we have my philodendron squamiferum and this one is really cool because it has these fuzzy petioles and it's in this gorgeous sombra la ceramic pot above that we have my philodendron billetier and this one has four leaves and this one's interesting because it has this root that's just like sticking out I guess it's become an aerial root now um, and it's just yeah sticking out of the pot for no good reason and there's a new growth point here so hopefully it'll grow something new very soon for us and last but not least on this little plant stand is my philodendron florida ghost so this is one of my favorite plants once again <laughs> um, and i really like this one because of the variety of leaf colors and shades that you can get so there are some that are really dark, some that are more minty. And then the newest one is like a lime color. On the bottom here, we have my Monstera Thai Constellation. It is a little bit of a baby and it's not growing very quickly for me. Um, it hasn't given me any new leaves in a while. So I don't know, fingers crossed that it starts growing again. And I think that's it for this area. Actually, we forgot this one. The snake plant is a Sansevieria bentel sensation, I believe. And when I first got this, it had all these like brown tips and it just wasn't looking good. So I think it's looking okay. Um, I do neglect it quite a bit, to be honest. So <laughs> yeah, I guess I shouldn't expect too much from it, but I do really like how the foliage has like this silvery tone and then the dark green the dark bluey green um, and then that kind of lime color I think is beautiful last but not least we have this little cabinet here where I keep a bunch of my plant supplies and my little Hoya cabinet so why don't we start over here so on top I have a bunch of Hoyas and then on the bottom I have some alocasias and some other random things like orchids so i'll open this up usually this uh cabinet is at around like 70 percent humidity as you can see so one of my favorite hoyas in here and kind of the elephant in the room is this hoya nicholsonia new guinea ghost so i love this hoya because it is so beautiful like the color is so striking it's like this minty silvery kind of color and it grows like a weed like it grows really really quickly i have literally nothing bad to say about this one it's just like easy hearty fast growing beautiful like just ticks all the boxes in front of that we have my hoya mini bell splash and it's this one with kind of the elongated leaves and the silvery splashing i think that one again has a really cool shape and is easy to take care of so this hoya is a hoya rotundiflora looks like this is this was actually one of my first hoyas ever and i mean it hasn't grown that much like if you look at that and compare it to my new guinea ghost like it's a world of a difference but it's just not a super fast growing hoya and that's okay it's still very beautiful and it produces like really adorable flowers which i can't wait to see one day next to that i have my hoya lacunosa luisa so this actually i got from Let's see, this plant here. So this is Hoya Lacunosa Luisa Silver. And then this actually reverted on one vine. And that's what this is. Okay, under that is another Lacunosa. So this is a Hoya Lacunosa 
I'm gonna say, no, I think this is actually a Hoya Croniana uh, Super Silver. It's just like this gorgeous silvery Hoya with um, kind of more round leaves than the Louisa, but they are very similar. The Louisa has more like longer leaves and then the Croniana is more like fat on the bottom, more like a teardrop shape. And next to that, I have my Hoya Polyneura and yeah it's healthy it's growing nicely it's not the fastest growing but um it is a very cute one i love kind of the veining there in the shape of it next to that i have a hoya bertonia aff another cutie that's crammed in there and again this one's like really soft and velvety as well you'll see that i'm very much about like colors and textures and so that's why i really like this one Beside that, I have my Hoya Kushkeliana Variegata. And again, like if you look at it, the coloring is just so beautiful and it looks so delicate and cute. So I love that Hoya. Right beside that, I have my Hoya Macrophylla Pot of Gold. This one I got because I really like the color of it. I really like the kind of a limey green color inside. I thought it was quite unique. Next to that, we have my Hoya GPS. So this one I got quite a while ago, but it hadn't grown for a really long time. And then I just thought it was a lost cause, but it started growing some new leaves here and here. So I'm very, very happy about it. Next, we have my Hoya Many Purensis. That's what it's called. It's growing quite nicely, actually. I've heard that this one's quite finicky sometimes, and I think it can be, like with watering. Um, that's why there, you have some leaves here that are kind of janky looking because I think I just didn't water it properly. But I mean, it's alive and it seems pretty happy and it's growing quite quickly. So I think it's doing okay. I love the shape of it again, and it's just very unique looking. Under that, we have another Hoya Crassy Petiolata Splash. Again, we saw one of these in the Mills Botol. So this is my second one. Next to that, we have my Hoya Serpent Splash. This is so cute because the leaves are so, so tiny. And again, I love round leaves. So it's right down my alley. It has an interesting kind of texture. It's um, kind of has like little bumpy dots on it. So um, I find it interesting to touch. Next to that, we have one of my newer Hoyas. This is my Hoya Sigillatus Silver. And yeah, it has these like elongated leaves that are like beautiful and silver. So this one is a Hoya Elliptica. And this last one over here is a Hoya Obovada Splash. No, I lied. This is a Hoya Obovada Variegata. If there is a little bit of variegation down the middle, but that's about it. Okay, so that's it for my Hoyas here. So if we go down to the next section, so we have a few more Hoyas, some alocasias, etc. So first things first, I have this uh, little variegated burl marks action. It is reverting a little bit, which is kind of sad. So I might have to cut some of these off, but um, I'm just getting it to root in here. And again, eventually my plan is to take it out of this cabinet and uh, let it live its life out in normal humidity. I have a Hoya Hushkeliana, not variegated. Oh, I need to water this one. But this is a green version of it with pink flowers. Next to that, we have a Hoya Dekie, and it's just rooting in here. We have a string of hearts variegated. We have a little baby Mikeins from some wet sticks that I got from my other Mikeins, and another little prop of the string of hearts here going to kind of the main compartment here. I have three orchids, one, two, three, which are not looking great at all, if you can see. I got these from the last Equigenera um, pop-up in Edmonton. It was kind of a random decision. I just decided to get them. I mean, this one looks kind of okay. Like, I think I just need to trim some of these dead ones off and it's feeling kind of okay. These other ones though are feeling quite dry. I have been watering them. Maybe the medium is not quite right. I don't know, but they are not happy. So I'm gonna have to figure that out if I have time. This is a little El Choco prop that's clearly not doing well. Um, 
we will not dwell on it. Let's keep going. Okay, so this is a beautiful plant. This is a Alocasia Frydeck Variegata. It is so pretty, like look at that. The leaf back here is actually a bit more variegated. And there's a new leaf coming out here. And I did check and there's some like very, very small baby corms in there. So maybe we'll have some baby Frydeck or variegated fried eggs pretty soon. And then behind that, I just have a normal fried egg that I grew from a corm. And then there's an alocasia Mickey Mouse, or actually it's not an alocasia, it's a xanthosoma Mickey Mouse. And I think that's it for this one. So we're closing our own up and moving over here. So this is a philodendron splendid, again on a grow thickly moss pole. And this is the newest leaf. It looks like this. Oh, that's stunning. I hadn't been really looking at it because it was facing kind of away, but that is beautiful. And moving on, this is a Sansevieria Moonlight. I haven't been watering this quite regularly and you look at how wrinkly it is. But it is giving me all these babies, so it must be like not super sad, you know? And then beside that, I have a couple of orchids. Um, that one is my mom's, and that one I got from a student at work. Um, I had my first student that I was training at work this past summer, and she gave me a beautiful orchid at the end. And this here is a little Clarinervium. I told you I have multiples of plants that I really like, including the Clarinervium. So that's what it is. There's two plants in there, and it's always growing new leaves, so. Then moving up, we have another little air plant that I need to water. And my Skindapsis Silver Lady. So I don't, I don't know if I really like this plant, but I got it kind of on clearance at a greenhouse and it was like about to die. So I decided to just save it last year, but now it's recovered and um, looks much happier now. This is a Skindapsis Silver Cloud. I'm lying, it's a Silver Splash. And you'll see the little silver splashes on there. I used to have a really big trailing pot of that one, but it got like too messy looking, kind of like the Exotica today. So I just took cuttings and sold it. So that's what it is. I think I got these from Wet Sticks actually. And I potted it up. And then next we have a little heart uh, leaf philodendron. I have a bigger pot of this and I have a lemon lime one as well, but they got thrips, so they're just recovering. I did miss a couple of plants here and there, like for example this uh, Clivia Miniata, it's my mom's, um, and then this mini one over here. I also have this random ZZ plant kind of in the corner of the TV room. In this corner, another random corner of the house, I have a Lemon Lime Maranta and it's very thirsty right now, like all my other plants, so I gotta water this one, but I bought this originally, I think as two like four inch little pots with uh, like six little stems in them. And they've grown a lot since then. I've also taken lots of propagations for like coworkers and friends. I've started trailing a couple of plants up there by my stairs. So I have a Marble Queen Pothos over there and a Skindapsis Argeus. Argeus? Yes, over there. <laughs> So those are trailing quite nicely. I think I might add more, like one more here and one more there, and I think that would look beautiful. My husband also has a few plants in his office that look like this. I'm not gonna go too much in depth though because even though I gave them to him, they are his plants, not mine. And behind this thing, whatever that is, there's also a raven ZZ plant. And there's a little picture of Nova and Lila who really love each other a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.